Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out the Hornet King channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the process that I use to remove an eastern yellow jacket colony from the ceiling of a client's basement. Plus, I'm going to be showing you guys close-ups of an adult wasp hatching from the comb. Plus, a little bit of tweezing of the larva to feed to my chickens and my turkey. Here's the video. Check it out. Oh yeah, there's, I can see daylight through this where this pipe comes through the wall. <laughs> I can hear buzzing, like, crawling, and carrying on in there. Yeah. Do they breed also? What's that? Do they breed? Oh yeah, yeah through their through their abdomen. They don't breed through their mouth. I mean, like. I breed like. A uh, breed. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. There's there's probably at least a thousand in here. Okay, let's start vacuuming them up. All right, so the first thing I wanted to do was vacuum up as many of the foragers that were coming back into the ceiling space as fast as I could without disturbing the nest. What I didn't want to have happen was have a swarm start. So you can see there's actually two places where they're coming in from. This big pipe on the right-hand side of the screen and a large cable for the air conditioning unit outside um, came through, and they, but neither one of them were properly caulked. So that's where they were coming in from. So I just tried to vacuum as many as I could. Since there being over a thousand in this nest, I really didn't want them all swarming at the exact same time. So if I could batten down the numbers beforehand without, without disturbing the colony, um, that would be ideal. And I was pretty successful at that. So as, since my vacuum is pretty powerful, um, it could rip that envelope off in a hurry. Um, this is an eastern yellow jacket colony, and they make kind of weaker envelope and weaker comb that kind of crumbles. So uh, getting too close with the nozzle would, would certainly rip the uh, envelope off of that and disturb the whole colony. I'll let a couple more come in from outside. There's, a, there's actually two entranceways. There's one where this pipe is, and then there's another one where there's a big heavy cable that comes through. Oh, there's one on your... On the top? Oh, oh really? <laughs> As long as she's on the outside, I'm fine with that. Right. <laughs> What's your wife think about this stuff? She didn't even see it I yet. Did, uh, no? <laughs> good. That's probably a good thing, right? <laughs> but she was interested in the photos. Yeah. The kids are too. Okay. I mean, it looks very artistic. It is, isn't it? Well, <laughs> I mean, even just that. like it's. But it's really, like, the stuff that I let you hold first, Yeah. it's really strong. This stuff is really crumbly. Huh. If you touch that, it starts to fall apart because they're just a different species. The, okay. The paper I gave you before is yeah. a ball-faced hornet, and that one's a. She like that. She she actually stung my glove. She stuck on my glove. Oh man. So right now, how many you think are in there? Is it? At least a, at least a thousand. Right now. Right now. Yep. At least a thousand. I've already sucked up probably a hundred of them. So allow a little bit of time for some more foragers to come back in, so I could just vacuum them up real quick. Um, and at this point, I'm going to start vacuuming off the envelope and exposing the comb. So that is going to cause them to swarm quite a bit, and uh, I was pretty prepared for that at the time. But you, as you can hear, the homeowner is actually standing not too far behind me, and I made a joke with him that I thought it was funny that I'm all gussied up in my suit, and he was literally standing behind with a short sleeve t-shirt and just like an afghan wrapped around his neck. <laughs> really cool dude. I was really, uh, we really had a good time removing this nest. Um, so I just take a little bit of time here just vacuuming off as much of the envelope to expose the comb. Um, and as I do this, one, uh, adults are going to start emerging and as they do I just suck them up as, uh, as fast as I can to try to avoid too much of a swarm. Um, people often ask during my videos uh, while watching is how come I allow the adults to swarm? Um, and you know, am I not concerned about them flying into the, uh, into the living space for the homeowner? Um, but the thing is, is that um, this being an alternative method to just spraying a bunch of chemicals, um, I'm physically and mechanically removing the colony. Um, allowing them to fly into the room isn't such a big deal because the wasps are going to fly to the lights or they're going to fly mainly to the window because they're going to go to natural light before they go to artificial light. And, you know, right as rain, it's pretty much 99% of the time that's what they do. So um, that's why the homeowner was safe to be standing behind me because they weren't really going to attack him. They're going to attack me and they're going to fly to the window, which is virtually what they did. 
So it's really hard to kind of get this shot. If you could see in some of the other angles from my other camera, you can see that I'm holding a flashlight between my pinky and ring finger, and I'm holding the phone with the same hand, uh, trying to get these close-up shots. So, and of course this pipe was in a really stupid location for this video. Um, but just trying to uh, get the best shots as I possibly could. And I actually found myself looking through um, the video screen of my phone while doing the actual removal, more so than looking at the nest with my own eyes. Um, it's almost like playing a video game. So depth perception is a little off, and I really didn't want the vacuum to just like suck up all of the comb. Um, I actually wanted to try to preserve as much of the comb as I could and try to extract as much larva later as I could um, to feed my animals. So I try not to waste too much of the, uh, of the colony if I can help it. But you can see my vacuum is really strong to where it pulls on the comb if I get too close. And it, it would literally suck up that entire nest if, if I allowed the nozzle to be too close to the, uh, to, the, to the comb itself. So that made it a little bit tedious trying to suck some of the adults off the side of the comb. Just because, you know, if you get too close, you're going to destroy everything. Um, but I did want to suck up all the envelope with the with the vacuum because th this type of envelope from the Eastern Yellow Jacket, it they don't build super strong envelope like bald faced hornets would. So you could sh literally suck up and it'll just crumble that envelope as it's getting vacuumed up. So this is a good sized colony. I mean, there's five combs here, uh, five layers of comb, I should say, and. Uh, and there was a significant amount of population within this nest. Um, and this is, a, this is a single season nest, so there's not, it's not like they had a couple years to build. I mean, this started probably in May, and you know, look, we're now at like the beginning of, of August, and this thing has grown to the size that it is. So there was a little bit of swarm happening, but they were primarily latched onto my wrists and around my veil. But I don't know what it is about wrists. It's almost like they know that that's a weak spot of the suit. Um, but there was probably 30 of them just just latched on to my to my uh, the sleeve to my glove. So once I got as many of the numbers down as I possibly could, I knew there was going to still give me some between the layers of comb, and then I was just going to just pretty much just reach with my hand and grab knock the comb down off of the ceiling, and then just uh, put it into the bin that I brought with me. But it's incredible to me too is that um, sometimes that I'll, I'll get calls from customers who had um, a pest control company come out and they would they would dust the entranceway outside of a nest like this, um, and that's all fine and good. But the thing is, if you're not hitting the nest, it's not going to be effective. So that's why I like to physically remove nests for people. the main comb yet. Yeah. Now I got that trapped inside with my hands covered in oh yellow jacket. <laughs> Alright, so now that I got the comb into my bin, any foragers that are coming back or any individuals that are left up in that space, I can vacuum up and I know that there's not going to be any more just re-emerging from the comb and, you know, having to, I could spend hours just vacuuming up if I left the comb up there. So, leaving the leaving the entranceway that they're using between those two, the cable and that pipe, leaving that open and allowing ones to still come in from outside allows me to uh, know that I'm vacuuming up all of the adults and there's not gonna be like a big swarm outside once I'm finished inside. Um, and you can see here, look at them all over my wrists, all over my glove and sleeve. And if, they, if they're left to just like sit there, if that sleeve gets pushed against my arm, like say I bunch against the wall or something, they could easily, Stinger could easily make its way all the way down to my skin and sting me. So I try to kind of get them as I go. And you can see around me, they're flying more to my left, and that's where the window is um, that goes to outside, and there's plenty of daylight shining through there. So most of them were staying on my left-hand side. 
And even though I just vacuumed this up, there's still a bunch had come in from outside. And some of the ones down in the basement were flying back up into the ceiling space and going back to where they thought the nest was. And most people ask too is um, if the adults are able to fly around, would they be flying further through the ceiling space? The thing is the ceiling space is dark and they will go to the light. So they're not really going to fly like into the, between the rafters further down through the room. Like they're going to just pretty much stay in this spot. And once they do fly down below the ceiling, they'll go right to the window. So this is how many that were consolidated on the window, which makes it really easy to just vacuum them up. There was probably maybe 30, 35 that were around the window at this point. And that was the most that were actually there. So most of them were pretty much staying either in the cavity or going right back up into the okay. ceiling space. Yeah. That one got me. Oh. <laughs> right when I took the glove off. <laughs> oh, was it on your glove all the time? I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I think it just landed on my hand right when I pulled the glove off. So after I got the nest home, I decided that I was going to try to break apart and get as many of the adults vacuumed up as I could um, before doing a little bit of uh, filming of the actual nest and also tweezing larva out to give to my chickens. Um, but also I wanted to get some shots of some hatching adults and it can be a bit distracting trying to get good shots when you have um, individuals flying off the nest. So even though this is uh, this is maybe like three hours later, uh, maybe a few more, um, they are still very active. They didn't, even though they were in my truck pretty much the entire ride home, um, they stayed very active in there. They didn't, none of them died that I could tell. And uh, so you can see the queen there is what I just pointed out on my right hand side. Um, so the thing is that there's still quite a bit of adults in between the layers of comb, obviously, and still the queen. So um, by the time I get home, there could have been 20 or so that have hatched between those three layers of, of, uh, of comb and cells. So you got to just be aware that even though you vacuum them all up, in a short amount of time, there's going to be new ones hatched. So this is my setup, which I'm pretty excited by, um, trying to get as many of the sounds as I possibly could, um, along with trying to uh, trying to get good shots of how I actually do just dissect these nests once I get them home. So here's the queen here on the back of this flap of comb. And obviously she's significantly larger than her daughters there. People often ask to see the inside of the vacuum. This is what the inside of my vacuum looks like. It starts out as just a little puddle of water with some Dawn dish soap, just a couple drops. And by the time I'm, this is the end of the day, after doing a few nest removals, and it's just sludgy, paper, like soggy mess. And obviously there's um, adult wasps inside there too. So once I'm finished, just kind of take the vacuum out and dump it out onto my compost pile. So this one I'm doing here is disconnect the hose. And you can see there's a lot of adults in there. There's probably over 800 adults or so inside that part of the vacuum. And that's between bald-faced hornets from two different removals plus the yellow jackets. All right, so this is an adult wasp that started chewing her way through the silk cap. And I wanted to show this to you guys of what this looks like to see them hatch. A lot of people ask about um, trying to get shots of them hatching. And so what's really wild about how wasps do this is that they... The larvae will weave the silk cap when they're ready to go into their pupation state or metamorphosis, just like a moth or butterfly does when they start you know, making their chrysalis or their cocoon. Um, so you see, once she's actually fully developed, she knows to come out of that cell. She hasn't used um, her mandibles yet. She hasn't used her legs, her antennae, or her wings. So she just like becomes aware to emerge from that cell and knows exactly how to chew her way out 
And then once she gets out, she knows how to, to walk. She knows how to, like, bat her wings. She can't fly yet for two more days. But it's just really wild how they're created, how they're able to, um, to go through these different stages. And they know what to do once they emerge. Or even when it's time to merge. So she'll chew on this for a while. This happened maybe about 20, 20 minutes maybe. And uh, so I do cut it down a little bit. But it's wild to see how um, effective she is at chewing off this bit of silk cap. And once she's actually out, other adults would come by and chew off the rest of the uh, silk cap. So that way there's a clean surface for the cell. Because they will relay new, new eggs inside those same cells. So now she's got both antennae out. And she's continuing to clean off that one side. Now she can tell she's able to kind of fit through there. So she'll start trying to squeeze through and uh, push herself out of that cell. And it's wild to see how her antenna work. Look how they, they're just like little fingers. And they just kind of feel around and feeling behind her and on the sides. And those mandibles don't close exactly like scissors. I mean, they kind of move uh, laterally too. It's really cool to see that, that really up close. Now she's squeezing herself through, and now this is her very first time using her legs, and very first time using her antennae and her wings. And she kind of has a little bit of like a waxy surface to her to her exoskeleton. So just some sped up tweezing for you guys. I filled up pretty much that entire medicine bottle with larvae. So I wanted to show a little bit of that process. Um, but I didn't want to take up too much time of the tweezing, uh, since I did include that in the last video. This is when I was all done. This is how much I tweezed out just in that short amount of time. Obviously shorter for you since it was sped up. <laughs> That's a lot of larva. Some noises that it makes. So this is a larva just touching her mandibles just to show that her mandibles cannot hurt you. They cannot bite. People often ask about that. Hurricane birds. birds come get some pigeon you ridiculous looking creature Did you guys go in the barn when it's like this that good jerky gobble, gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble, gobble. I know you still got a cold stay out there All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video from the Hornet King channel. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions for future videos, something like see me cover in an upcoming video, also drop in the comments to let me know. If you guys haven't subscribed already to the channel, please consider doing so and hit that bell notification down below, and that way you guys get an update anytime I do post a video. Thank you to all of you who have donated to the Hornet King channel and supporting my cause and helping me grow my channel and growing my production, so that way you guys have a better quality content to watch. Alright everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video, supporting my channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.